It's a special vintage edition of the top five cards. We're giving you the vintage cards that have gone up the most in today's top five cards. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies, and at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me and my team as we help you profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to a special Top 5 Tuesday, where we are diving into the vintage market and looking for vintage cards that have gone up the most since the start of the year. Because vintage cards remain hot. While modern cards have been bouncing around and some have been going up and a lot have been going down, vintage cards have remained steady and many of them have been inching up as time goes on as vintage cards typically do. So we're celebrating five of the hottest vintage cards today. And right off the bat, I want to congratulate Jeff Lee from Millbrae, California. He is the winner of our Bleaker Trade Night contest. We're going to fly Jeff out to our Bleaker Trade Night on May the 10th in New York City. And even if you didn't win the contest, if you're in the New York area, we would still love for you to attend our Bleaker Trade Night on May the 10th. You do need to RSVP. This is a limited space event, but you can RSVP in the link in the show notes below. And guys, as we go through these cards today, open up your Sports Card Investor app because all of the cards you're about to see, plus thousands of additional vintage cards, are now in the Sports Card Investor app. We are going much more heavy into vintage, and you can see all of those cards. If you don't have the Sports Card Investor app, it's free. Go download it right now by searching for Sports Card Investor in the App Store. It's time. Let's go with today's top five vintage cards. In the number five spot, an all-time great catcher and World Series champion, Gary Carter. Gary Carter's rookie cards have been hot. Now, you guys probably know Carter was a catcher for both the Expos and the Mets. He won the World Series with the Mets in 1986. He was an 11-time All-Star. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame back in 2003. His rookie card is from 1975 Tops, and that was a very iconic set because of the eye-catching design. Lots of use of color in that set. It was also an iconic set because not only did you have Carter's rookie card, but you also had the rookie cards of Hall of Famers George Brett, Robin Yunt, and Jim Rice as well. But it is Gary Carter's cards we are taking a look at today because these have been going up. And specifically, we're looking at his 1975 Topps card, that colorful rookie card there you can see on the screen. Of course, this is when they used to combine multiple rookies together on the same card. So there's Gary up there. This 1975 rookie card in PSA 8, PSA 9, and PSA 7 on the screen. And if we switch to look by price change by percentage, what's real interesting here is it's the 9 and the 8 that have been going up, and they've been going up a lot. There's only a couple of sales of that PSA 9 because it's very low population, a population 228. But as of the last sale, it was up 47.5%. There's a lot more sales of the PSA 8 because its population is almost 1,300. That card is up 50% since the start of the year. All of these graphs we're looking at are going back to January 1st. That card in PSA 8 condition most recently sold for $225. And there was a sale of that card around the start of the year for as low as $150. Other sales of that card were around $168, $173. So pretty nice profit on the recent sales of $225. Recently has sold for as much as $235. Now what's interesting though, is in a little bit of a lower grade, the PSA 7 is actually down a little bit since the start of the year. That's an interesting pattern you're about to see where higher end, higher grade vintage cards, lower population, are going up. Some of the more common lower grade cards seem to be inching down. Switching to football for the number four spot and going with one of the greatest running backs of all time, 
Walter Payton. Sweetness has made the top five. And you guys know, Sweetness was an incredible running back. The MVP in 1977, he made five All-Pro teams and nine Pro Bowls. He was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1993, finished his career with almost 17,000 rushing yards and 125 total touchdowns. His rookie card was from 1976, and it is very tough to find well-centered football cards from 1976. Only 53 of his cards have ever made it to PSA 10 conditions, so they're almost impossible to find and command a large price. Let's look at some of those cards in a little bit of a lower grade, one that's going to be a little more affordable for most football card collectors and investors. So this is his 1976 Topps base rookie card. We're looking at it in a PSA 7, PSA 5, PSA 6, and PSA 4. So four different grades there in the PSA 4 to PSA 7 range. Once again, we're going to look at how this has changed by percentage since the start of the year. And you can see that it's the PSA 6 that is up the most. It's up about 17% since the start of the year. That card today will cost you $525. You could have bought it for around $450 if you go back to January 1st. The PSA 5 cards up about 7%. The PSA 4 card is up about 5%. Interesting, the PSA 7 is flat since the beginning of the year. I wouldn't be surprised if the next time that sells, if it inches up a bit, since his other cards in other grades have been inching up a bit as well. Overall, it seems that Walter Payton's cards are on a pretty good run. For the number three card today, we're going back in time to 1950s baseball. And that's where you find Sandy Koufax's rookie card. And what a pitcher Sandy Koufax was. You know, he actually retired at the age of 30 due to arthritis. But in the time he played, between 1955 and 1966, he still won an MVP award three Cy Young Awards, and he pitched four no-hitters. He was one of the absolute dominant pitchers of that era. His rookie card is from 1955 tops, considered one of baseball's most iconic sets, because not only do you have Koufax as rookie, you're, you also had Harmon Killebrew, Roberto Clemente, and then of course you had notable cards of non-rookies, such as Ted Williams, Hank Aaron, Jackie Robinson, Willie Mays, etc. But it is Sandy Koufax's card that we are focused on right now. So let's take a look at Koufax's 1955 Topps rookie card in PSA 3, PSA 4, and PSA 5 condition. And what you're going to observe if we switch to price change by percentage is it's that PSA 4 and that PSA 5 that are doing the best. That PSA 5 is up 22% since the start of the year. The PSA 4 is up 36% since the start of the year. Now, these are both fairly pricey cards. The PSA 5 right now most recently sold for around $2,600. Actually sold a few days before that for $3,000. But back in January, there were sales of that card for as little as $1,900. So it has gone up quite a bit since the start of the year. The one Kofax card of these that hasn't gone up is the PSA 3. So once again, as you look at some of the lower condition cards, they don't seem to be doing as well as the high end of the market. That PSA 3 card, although, although there hasn't been a sale of that card in over a week, the last time it sold, it was down 7% from where it was in January. But if you have a higher end Sandy Koufax rookie card, chances are it's done pretty well for you since the start of the year. In the number two spot, a car that barely makes the vintage cutoff line. It's from 1979, so it is considered vintage. It is Ozzy Smith. The Wizard of Oz has made the number two spot in today's list. And for good reason. This guy was an absolutely incredible shortstop for the Padres and the Cardinals. A 15 times All-Star, 13 time Gold Glove winner. He was the 1982 World Series champion, and he made the Hall of Fame in 2002. His rookie card from 1979 is particularly hard to get in a really high grade because a lot of the baseball cards that year were not well-centered, so the population on PSA 9s and PSA 10s 
is quite low. Let's take a look at how this card has done. There is that PSA 9 right there on your screen. That is a population 382. We've also got on the screen the PSA 8, much more common population in PSA 8 of almost 2300. The PSA 7 has a population of around 2200. The PSA 6 has a population of around 1500. But if we look at what these have done since the start of the year by percentage, most of them are on their way up. In fact, that PSA 9, only a few sales of that, but that card is up 34% since the start of the year. That card most recently sold for $2,975, and it had sold back on January 2nd for $2,225. So a nice $750 increase since the start of the year. The uh, PSA 8 is up almost 38% since the start of the year. That's most recently sold for $465. And actually there was a sale of that as high as $685. And back in January, it was selling for $338. So that has gone up well too. The PSA 7 is up 20%. Once again, the lowest of the grades, the PSA 6 is down. So once again, as you get into the more common, lower grades of a card, a little bit less desirable, that end of the market has not been holding up as well. The more desirable, lower population, higher grades are ones that seem to be pushing the market up right now on vintage. But as long as you have one of those more rare Ozzy Smith rookie cards, chances are you've done well. It's time for the number one vintage card, but before I give it to you, let me remind you that all of the charts and graphs you see in today's episode are from Market Movers, and if you want to chart the price changes of tens of thousands of vintage cards and track your vintage card collection, then you want Market Movers. And now you can try Market Movers for free for seven days by going to sportscardinvestor.com, clicking on Market Movers in the main menu bar, and using promo code TRIAL. Okay, guys, here we go. It's our number one card, and it is the late, great Hank Aaron. The Atlanta legend, the hometown hero for many here in Atlanta, well-deserving of the number one spot on today's list. Now, Aaron passed away a little more than a year ago now, but his impact on the game of baseball is certainly not forgotten, and it was special that the Atlanta Braves won the World Series last year and were able to remember and commemorate Hank Aaron throughout that journey. Of course, Hammering Hank finished his career with 755 home runs and almost 2,300 RBIs, widely considered to be one of the greatest hitters and frankly, greatest baseball players of all time. His rookie card is from 1954 tops. It is extremely hard to find in high grade. That set suffered from quality control issues, both centering as well as print defects on the orange background made it really difficult to find high grade Hank Aaron cards. And anyone who has one is likely holding it closely at this point. But there have been some in, low, in lower grade that have been selling frequently online. So let's take a look at what some of those have done since the start of the year. So this is his 1954 top space rookie card in PSA 1 condition, PSA 2 condition, and PSA 3 condition. And if we look at how these have changed by percentage since January 1st, all of these have gone up. Now there's not a ton of sales of any of these. All of these cards are low population. The PSA 1, a population of 346. The PSA 2, a population of 515. The PSA 3, a population of 625. So not a ton of these out there. But if you look at the pattern of what has sold, they are all a very, very healthy pattern. That PSA 3 is up almost 37% since the start of the year. That card's currently at $4,100 and had been selling for $3,000 at the beginning of the year. The PSA 2 is up 27% since the beginning of the year. Card is currently $3,800. That card was $3,000 back in January. And the PSA 1 is up almost 50%. It is bucking the trend of the lower grade cards not doing as well. In this case, all of Hank Aaron's cards seem to be doing well. That PSA 1 
Uh, most recently sold for about $2,250. It's up 50%. There was a sale of that card in January for $1,500. So that was a nice increase since the beginning of the year. No matter what Hank Aaron card you have, chances are you've done well with it if you've held on to it, especially over the last couple of years. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's top five. Check out Market Movers and check out the Sports Card Investor app. Both are your friend while you are looking to understand the sports card market. You can go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on Market Movers in the main menu bar to check out Market Movers. Promo code trial gets you seven days free. And the Sports Card Investor app is free for you to check out simply by searching Sports Card Investor in the App Store. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and if you want to see us do more vintage content, please give this a like. Make sure you are subscribed. Hit that little bell icon so you get notified when new episodes like this come out. And we'll see you back in a couple of days with our next one. Take care.